mobile games. It is a dominating market in the video game space with millions upon millions of people playing them every single day. And I'm not one of them because I've never given mobile games a fair chance, but that is about to change. The mobile market is a never ending sea of games with thousands of apps being added every single week. And just thinking of where to begin can be, well, daunting to say the least. Personally, I've always tried to keep a healthy relationship with my phone and playing games on it was always one of the places where I drew a line. But I also know I'm probably missing out on some great ones, including quite possibly my next favorite game. So this is seven days of only playing mobile games. Okay, first things first, here are my boundaries for the next week. One, no game streaming or cloud services. So that does that means I can't use Game Pass or stream something from a console to my phone. Off limits. Two, no backbone or accessories. So this means I can't use any external controllers for now. Three, no consoles. This may not seem like a big deal, but I play these things every single day, especially my 3DS. There's a reason why it lives right next to my bed, and there's also a few games I've started that I haven't finished on it. It's only seven days. It's only a week. Lily, this is what I was gonna put the consoles in. Why are you trying to stop this? This way, I have zero temptation. It's for the best. And four, just my iPhone. And the intent behind this is basically to view this as my sole game console, which is already kind of hard to wrap my head around because I'm not actually sure what iPhone this is. I mostly just use it to take very flattering pictures of myself, so. No, but seriously, what, what iPhone is this? And so, we begin. I opened the App Store and I was paralyzed with options especially with no basis on what to even start with. Top one, my Talkin' Tom Plus. Raise your, your own feline friend. Hmm. Of course, I was familiar with short form games like Clash of Clans or Angry Birds, but that wasn't necessarily what I was looking for. In fact, I didn't actually even know what I was looking for. One thing was for sure is that I knew the big games, stuff like Genshin Impact, Call of Duty. Diablo Immortal, I've heard of that. I'll just get the big ones. I'll get the big ones. I made a character, jumped in, and already holding my phone horizontally and using touchscreen controls would be something I'd have to get used to, among a few other things. Oh God, I have messages already interrupting my gameplay. God, you guys do not disturb. God damn it. It was fine, but I'd be lying if I said I was a big Diablo fan to begin with. So it didn't take long until I began aimlessly downloading things only to play them for a moment, lose interest quickly or hit a paywall and then delete them nearly as fast as I downloaded them. No shame to those games, but I needed Kirk game, something with a story, a direction. So I searched story and that took me to an insightful corner of this market. Searching story revealed a bustling array of romantic visual novels and, um, yeah, I downloaded them. The best part though, is that the sexy options cost in-game currency and the most boring options are completely free. It was honestly a great way to end day one and to play while I was falling asleep. All right, we're in day two and I already have some good stuff that's also very equally applied with some annoying bad stuff. On a positive note, while I was uploading footage to my computer at work, instead of just doom scrolling on Twitter, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pop my phone open. I'm gonna play a hidden object game. That sounds like fun. Until five minutes later, and then I was forced to watch what felt like a two minute ad. And that's when I realized I'm getting sick of free real quick. In trying to use my phone as a distraction from something, I ended up having to try and find a distraction because of the ads from the distraction I wanted in the first place. 
I still didn't open Twitter though, so that's a good sign. But if I'm really gonna start actually trying to look at this thing as a console, and I don't want to deal with the constant distraction, the constant spoon feeding of advertisements, then I have to buy games. Yeah. So I open my phone again to the sea of apps. But this time, I wasn't just here to window shop. I was invested. And one game in particular stood out to me. And just like that, something marvelous had happened. <laughs> this is an interesting one because, <laughs> Kurt, you're playing a bunch of mobile games yes. for uh -huh. video. Yes. Probably don't want to talk too much about them. Or do you? Uh, I mean, I, I would, I will. Actually, there's maybe, there's maybe one or two I, I'm willing to talk about. In my journey to find uh, things I'm enjoying, I started playing Florence. Oh, okay. I love Florence. That's really, I was going to ask if you had checked that one out because so, that is the, the mobile game. Really? Was, so, overnight, it seemed to have taken my attention away from the world around me. Instead of scrolling endlessly through social media on my lunch break, I was peeling back the layers of Florence's story. When I'd usually be watching trash TV about alien conspiracies, I was organizing a new chapter of her life. By day four, having already finished Florence, it had felt as though I had an awakening moment. Up until playing Florence, which I just kind of bought on a whim, I was only playing free games. But there was something about them, even Diablo Immortal, that just felt small. Like that they were only meant in small doses. And because of that, they were serving a, a very specific thing, this thing to fill time in between other small things, a distraction in between distractions. But Florence was the exact experience I was looking for. I was looking for something that felt as though it was using this device with a sense of intent, as though its design choices were deliberate. Stuff like scrolling to see the panels that are telling the stories, then it switches over to you doing math problems, and then it switches over to you tapping on notes, which requires you to turn the phone to see how the scene unravels in a certain way. And it's just, it's beautiful. Like it's, that's exactly the experience I was looking for. And just like that, I started to view the once overwhelming market of mobile games a little differently. I was suggested games like Bury Me My Love, a text message adventure that unraveled entirely in a choose your response style conversation. An experience that was paced as though I was really texting someone. I got device six, a game that quite literally turns the use of the phone on its head. And the list of what to play next just kept growing. I thought for so long that mobile games were these things designed to induce quick serotonin hits to keep me hooked on simple and addictive gameplay mechanics. But what ended up happening was the absolute opposite. The games that kept me coming back were games like Florence, Bear Me My Love, Device 6, games that use the phone in unconventional and creative ways to tell engaging and oftentimes moving stories. I have completed Florence. I just completed device six last night. I'm still allowing messages from Barry My Love to distract me. And I signed up for Apple Arcade. I think I'm in. My list of games continued to grow. The artful imaginative narrative game, Songs of Bloom, chill puzzlers like Pattern, and part novel, part interactive movie, Pry. And before I knew it, this seven day trial of only playing mobile games had come to an end. Seven days may not have seemed like a lot, but considering that I play these consoles every single day, sometimes old games for leisure and new ones for work, it was tough but I had to be forced out of my comfort zone in order to see this corner of games. Otherwise it would have just been like day one where I just download the first things I see, lose interest and go to play something else that I'm actually interested in. Now having done the whole thing, my biggest takeaway was just how shallow my lens was into the mobile market. Because like I said, I knew the big ones. I knew the PUBGs, the Genshin Impacts, the Candy Crushes, and the Grindstones. And those are totally, absolutely, completely fine. But me only seeing that was an absolute disservice to the sea of incredibly interesting, remarkable games that I found. And by the end, to my surprise, I didn't just manage the fine games that I loved, but I found things that completely warped my perception of this thing. I played games that should only be experienced on a phone. Now, with all that said, if you'll excuse me, 
I have a romantic visual novel called Waking Up Pregnant that I need to attend to.